this series of videos I'm attempting to repair and restore this DEC PDP 11-34 vintage computer. So far in this series I've stripped the unit down, been through various boards and got to the point in the last video where I could boot up the main CPU. Um, I haven't fully tested it yet so I've been going through running various test programs I've tested all the memory now, it's run through multiple uh, test programs and it seems to be fine. I had one faulty memory chip, I've replaced that, but all the rest seems fine, the board itself seems fine, and everything else seems to be running. I can't fully test it just yet, it's a fairly complex thing to test everything in these machines, uh, but it is running up to the point where I need to start carrying out some more in-depth testing. Now at the end of the last video I said that the next step would be to put in the floating point card followed by the cache memory card. I've decided to put that off for a while. Testing those uh, requires, or properly testing them, requires running some fairly uh, detailed test programs. And I don't want to keep keying them in uh, through the console, either the manual console or the remote console. Uh, so what I really want is to try and get some kind of um, mass storage uh, sorted out for this. And uh, obviously the easiest way is to try and attach a floppy drive to it. So I've got a pair of RX-02s, uh, they're dual 8 inch drives, and uh, I want to now see if we can go through one of those. Uh, they need restoring, repairing, so we're going to kind of take a bit of a detour here and uh, branch off and look at one of those and try and get it restored. Before we do that, uh, we do of course need some way of attaching those drives to this machine. And that's done through a special interface card. So this is an RX211, uh, or if you want the M number, it's M8256. And um, in this video, we'll start by just dropping this in, see if it works. Now one thing to bear in mind when you're adding cars to these machines is I've mentioned before that sometimes you need to make a small modification to the bus. So if a card uses DMA it needs uh, one of the jumpers on the backplane uh, opening up. Now at the moment I'm putting everything into the CPU backplane uh, and then later on I'll move the ancillary uh, or auxiliary boards to the second backplane but for now everything is going into the single backplane just means I'll have to change the linking later on. Now if we look at the serial card or a serial card for these and we look at these two pins, these are the start of the uh, C slot, remember this goes in offset so the A and B slots are to its right so this is the start of C. Notice there is nothing on these two pins so this card does not use DNA. Whereas if we look at this card, it's got a lot of data to move so you'll see there are connections going to these first two pins. So in other words, this card uses DMA, so we need to modify the backplane slot that I intend to drop this into. If you've watched the previous videos, then you'll know that there was a small um, yellow link on the underside of this backplane, and uh, I've removed that. That was the uh, link that was uh, essentially linking out one of the uh, jumpers we're talking about on the back plane. And um, if you remove this, it enables DMA for that particular slot, and it just so happens this uh, link was in a suitable slot, so I've removed it. Uh, that's enabled uh, DMA for that particular slot that I intend to plug the uh, RX211 into. Um, but just to make sure that I haven't uh, destroyed anything, and before we plug the card in, make sure I haven't introduced any of the faults, so we're not chasing a fault I've introduced and assuming it's the card that's been plugged in. Uh, you have seen these before, I've shown these before, these are uh, grant uh, continuity cards and they're plugged into the D slot for any unpopulated slots in the uh, backplane. Uh, there's another type of um, this shorting card, you can possibly just see the tip of it here, I'll take it out and show it to you in a minute, but that performs this function so it shorts out these pins but it also shorts out the uh, two pins for the, um, the DMA uh, enabling link so if you take the link out and you plug this card in it, it kind of uh, effectively remakes that link so the board uh, or the back plane thinks that links in. So what I want to do is just quickly boot this up and make sure it still runs 
and if it does I can pop this uh, shorting card out and uh, we'll plug the actual RX 211 in. So we'll just try and power this up. I'm going to try and write to a particular memory address. So you can kind of ignore this for now and just um, carry out a, a very quick test. Okay, so it appears to be working. I haven't damaged anything. Uh, what I'm going to do now is plug the RX 211 card in. I've got this configured so it should uh, enable us to still boot the machine. And uh, we'll use a a program that we can hook up to this remotely just to test the card and see if it reads okay. It won't fully test it but at least we'll be able to tell if it's responding at all. So firstly I need to remove the bridging card, so that's this one. And this is the card I was talking about as well as providing the shorting links for the uh, grant continuity it also links out the two DMA pins, so it effectively puts the little uh, yellow link back in. So I've taken this out, I'll now plug the RX211 card into the same slot. Okay, the card's plugged in, I'm going to start up the cooling fan, don't want the cards overheating. And uh, we'll see if this will still boot up. I have carried out static testing on the card by the way, just to try and make sure it's working and done the usual thing of plugging it into the back plane with nothing else in and it seems to work fine but uh, it's really how it interacts with the other cars that's the important thing. So we'll turn this on, a good first sign it's actually come to life and um, I'm just going to pull up a, a program here and we'll try and uh, just do a, a quick test on that particular card. Okay, well, as you can see, it appears to be working fine. It's responded. Uh, if the card's not fitted and you run this test, you'll get a connection error, and um, it does appear that it's doing what it's supposed to, at least at this point. It doesn't guarantee it's working, of course, but the next thing I'll need to do is get the floppy drive onto the bench. We'll strip that down, um, restore it, try and get it up to the point where we believe it's working, and then ultimately we'll connect it to this uh, setup and see if we can load and boot from a floppy disk. Okay, and here is the first of our RX02 dual floppy drives. So the plan with this is to strip it right down. I don't want to just power it up. I don't know what state it's in, it rattles, so there's obviously loose things in there. Uh, so we'll strip it right down. Uh, properly restore and refurbish the two drives. Hopefully there's no real damage in there. I don't know what the state of the electronics is, so it might be a bit of a, a repair series in its own right. Uh, but we'll go through this, get it stripped down into its major uh, sub-assemblies and uh, go from there. So it is a bit bulky, it's hard to film, but I'll do what I can. Uh, the first thing I want to do is remove the power supply, so I'll spin it around uh, we'll get the power supply out of the way, make it a lot lighter, and uh, then we can start dismantling the rest of it. So step one is to remove the power supply. I just need to unplug the various power leads. So there's one that comes down to here, one that goes up to the top board. So it's under here. I can unplug those. Uh, I'll be replacing the mains cable, and um, this after market uh, addition will need to be disconnected so that I can lift the power supply off and then it's just a few screws that hold this down to the chassis so I'll get this out of the way and we'll go from there. I've got the wires unplugged I've taken all the screws out so this power pack should now just lift out of the way just need to make sure I ease the wires out and don't damage anything. Okay and that's the power pack removed. Okay, so I've got a couple of uh, loose screws here, don't know where they came from, so we'll save those for later. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is take out the two PCBs, I'll get these out of the way so I don't damage them, and um, we just need to make sure we remember how they're plugged in. Unfortunately these plugs are offset so they don't uh, use all the pins on the header, so um, just need to make sure we get that right. Notice that one of the plugs is offset on the 
uh, read write heads so um, I'll get these out of the way and then we can start taking the rest of it apart so that's the next step so we can see some of there's always modifications to these machines um, it's very rare to find one that's 100% uh, original but this one is in fairly good condition so uh, let's hope there's not too much damage to the actual uh, mechanisms themselves that's the electronics out of the way the next thing I can do is remove the front uh, cover so we will get that out of the way and then we can take this top platform off and that will give us full access to the drives underneath there's also a plate on the bottom you can take off uh, to get access underneath so we'll flip it over later on and have a look underneath but as I, say, I want to strip this right down so we can properly clean it and have a really good look at these uh, two drives okay I've taken the top cover off I've taken the front cover off and I've taken the fan shroud off a lot of loose screws a lot of screws missing I don't think all the screws were original either I don't think that's an original screw um, and now we've got all these screws out the drives are now separate although I have spotted something in the left drive that gives me a bit of cause for concern so the first thing is there's some metal swarf in here so um, this is why I stripped these down that that will instantly destroy uh, a floppy disk that's not the thing that concerns me the most though as I said this rattled and I couldn't figure out what it was I'm going to try and get out what I think is causing the rattle Okay, that's something I haven't seen before, a drill bit inside a floppy drive. So um, a bit concerning, don't know why that would be in there, whether someone was trying to drill something and dropped it or whatever, but uh, okay, so that's the first, haven't seen that before. Uh, so what I can do now is take the bottom cover off these, we'll have a look on the underside and see uh, what horrors lie in wait for us under there. I've tried to just gently turn these a little bit and they are very tight so uh, they obviously need some work and um, other than that they don't look too bad they're not as dirty as, as I, I was expecting but um, they definitely need cleaning up. The um, uh, lead screw is uh, pretty much seized up it won't turn so uh, we'll get the bottom covers off and uh, have a look that's all the screws out so let's see what's underneath this okay well again very clean and quite surprised how clean this is and the belt actually looks usable so it is very tight though so uh, we need to take the bearings out or at least clean them up but it doesn't feel too rough it just feels tight so that's looking quite promising I'll flip it back over So this one's in its half position and the lead screw again won't turn so that's not surprising usually the grease just um, sets on the lead screw it just needs um, cleaning up I'm not going to take it out if you take it out you can get uh, all sorts of problems but I'm going to very carefully clean it uh, you've got the read right head so I'm going to look at that that actually looks pretty good I can't see anything wrong with that so uh, hopefully the other one's the same yeah I can't turn the lead screw on that one either and um, next step is we'll get these cleaned up uh, I won't video it, it's, I've shown um, drive um, cleaning before it's uh, fairly tedious I'm just going to take the top cover off this, just a few screws lift the cover off, um, we'll get the head raised solenoid out of the way and then I can get inside, give everything a really good clean get the lead screw freed up uh, lubricate all the bearings and uh, we can start reassembling this unit so um, that's for the next video um, hopefully by uh, the end of the next video we'll have the mechanics reassembled and then we can start looking at the electronics <laughs>